Hi everyone, Bob Mace Comer here. On behalf of Simply Fishing, we proudly present the finest lake trout video ever presented, and we're talking about world-class lakers. About 15 years ago, I started to develop a desire for lake trout. This meant I was in for a real educational curve because I had very little knowledge or understanding of the species. In my early days of research, I found many people fishing the Lakers very deep in the midsummer season because of their apparent predictable location and, in my opinion, to promote products devoted to deep water presentations such as downriggers and the like. All with seemingly very little interest or respect to what they were doing to the fishery. In most cases, a very old and fragile fishery at that. I soon lost interest in Lakers until I started to research when they were predictably shallow and could be fished and released with the least amount of harm. While fishing with Mike Ryman at North Knife Lake Lodge in Manitoba, I became familiar with some of the spring and fall habits of the Laker, and bingo, I had found the secret to having fun with some of the true giants of the fresh water. That is what this video is all about, finding, catching, and releasing the hardest pulling, toughest fighting big game fish of the true north and we'll do it at one of the finest lake trout lakes in the entire world, Lake Athabasca, out of Cliff Blackmer's Athabasca Camps. It's a fact, however, not very well known. The fishery referred to as a lake trout isn't even a member of the trout family. Instead, it's a member of the char family. The laker as we know it is referred to as the Mackinac, a togue and in some cases, the gray trout. Many names have been dedicated to the trout in various native tongues. In researching the Lakers, it becomes obvious there are many geographical races of lake trout. However, the most common are the lean trout and the fat trout, basically identified by the characteristic body shape. Trust me, we'll be dealing with the latter of the two, the fat trout. In the spring and fall, Lakers make a precise and predictable movement into and out of the shallows. This is due in part to the call of nature to fulfill their spawning urges and the fact that their main forage will also take to the shallows. The laker is indeed a cold water fish and in most cases will be forced to inhabit the deeper, colder waters of most smaller systems during the midsummer. And that alone will reduce your window of opportunity to fish them safe in the shallow water environments. However, that is not the case with Athabasca. This huge body of water offers a wide window for you to safely catch and release her super secret, the giant lakers. Every fish you'll see in this presentation was caught and released during a single three-day period in mid-July, and we never fished deeper than 25 feet, nor did we use any live or cut bait. Like I said, I researched long and hard to come up with the practical understanding I have of the laker. And one of the lessons I learned along the way was to find a very large body of water with great depth and the ability to hold cold water temperatures through the entire season. Combine that with distant offshore structures that near the surface. A quality forage basin and voila, you have potential Laker gold mine. And that's what we found at Athabasca. In most cases, you will find the best areas to be very remote and may take a little extra effort to achieve, but what the heck, that's part of the experience anyway. If you examine the habitat of Trophy Lakers, you'll find the requirements very rigid. They require cold, oxygenated water. As far as a lake classification, they're almost exclusive to oligotrophic systems. In the summer, to find them at depths at 50 feet or more is not uncommon, even in bigger lakes. However, it is best to refrain from fishing them when they are below 40 feet. You are likely to kill or severely injure lakers that are caught in these depths of more than 40 feet, even if you release the fish quickly. Remember, some of these fish can be in excess of 80 years old, and trust me, they will be very fragile. As far as their feeding habits go, they are actually bottom feeders, and often scour the bottom for an easy meal. However, big lakers are piscivores and depend on a viable live baitfish population. In most waters, lakers will rely upon cisco, whitefish, tulipy, and in the case of Athabasca, grayling for their substance. As far as spawning goes, as I said earlier, lakers spawn in the fall when the water temperatures are between 47 and 54 degrees. 
and will select large reefy areas or large point areas that rise from depths as deep as 35 or 40 feet to within inches of the surface. In some systems you'll find Lakers using rivers to assist in their spawning and this can happen a bit earlier in the season if the weather conditions are right, meaning a severe cold front condition dispensing colder water into the main lake. Lakers do not spawn in what is referred to as beds. They are random spawners, simply dropping their eggs into crevices formed by the boulders where they are usually fertilized and incubate over the winter. Lakers are among the true giants of the freshwater kingdom, and there are many methods to catch them. One of the more common without question would be trolling. Trolling accounts for more than 75% of the Laker catches around the world. It's very popular because of a few basic reasons. One being the ability to cover large areas of structure and maintain good lure speed and depth control. Another factor is Lakers are notorious followers and have been known to follow lure presentations for great distances, tapping and nudging your offering many times before committing, even if committing at all. Boat control is also achieved with very little effort in almost all conditions and in areas where you're forced to fly in, you'll be limited to the amount of equipment you can take in, i.e. trolling motors and deep cycle batteries. We did considerable trolling while at Athabasca for all of the aforementioned reasons. Our lure choices were wide and varied. We started pulling Stanley Spoons and Yakima T60 flatfishes with Berkeley Power Bay trailers. Remember, I said Lakers are notorious bottom feeders and are great followers. This should explain why we added the Berkeley Power Grubs for trailers. Anything beyond the lure's natural action and color reflection we could add seemed to help. And as the day part progressed, we found we needed to change both lure color and trailer color to stay on the bite. This is very common with Lakers because they have such incredible eyesight and are not afraid to use it. There was never a need for planer boards as one might expect. However, if you challenge the Lakers at Athabasca, it might be We were basically alone in our structure and being cautious with our boat control, we didn't seem to spook these shallow Lakers. The depths we were pulling lures at ranged from about 10 to 20 feet as the day progressed. The entire reason for fishing this area was due to an experience I had on a past trip. I was bringing up a laker of about 30 pounds, and as the fish was ascending, she regurgitated a whitefish that appeared to be about 4 pounds. No sooner had this happened, and out of nowhere came a laker large enough to eat the one I had on the line and committed itself to the offering that was regurgitated by the hooked laker. This caused me to stop in my tracks and ended up losing the big one again. Rest assured, I was destined to return. Spoons are a great choice for shallow lakers. You can dress them up or down depending on the feeding habits of the laker. Our spoon choices included the Stanley Pike and Muskie Boss version and the Lynn Thompson Five of Diamonds in a size 4. In almost every case we added the life and scent found in the Berkeley Power Bait trailer. We found the spoons to work well as a very shallow offering as well as over deeper water to attract some of the fish that were being missed by the T60 offering which was working much deeper. On a slow troll and a short line, one can expect the T60 to run about 14 to 16 feet. With a spoon running about 10 to 12 feet, you accomplished great column coverage. Another lure group we had great success with was the spinnerbait. In particular, the Stanley Pike and Muskie Boss spinnerbait in both one and a half and two and a half ounce offerings, both trolled and cast. For now, let's concentrate on the trolled version. We found when we pulled the Cisco pattern and made large S turns, thus constantly changing the speed and direction, we caught very large Lakers. In this case, we were both running the same weight lure depending on the depth we wanted to achieve. At other times, we would run in a straighter line and simply pump our presentations to activate a strike. During this presentation, we would run two different weight lures and again claim more of the water column. Either way, Stanley Pike and Muskie Boss spinnerbaits in the Cisco pattern were at times as good as it gets. A big part of the problem with Lakers is they will often identify with a normal home range that could exceed 100 miles. What that means is once you have located a holding area or feeding area, you can't expect the Lakers to stay there for any great length of time. The truth is, is their forage is constantly on the move, and that will force the Lakers to move as well, especially the true giants. Their summer movements will often be dramatic and often hard to follow. 
With systems as big as Athabasca, there is always something in nature going on that will bring the big boys, or gals should I say, to the upper 20 or 30 foot of the water column, or shallower. The phenomenon we were dealing with had many variables. First of all, it was mid-July. Our surface temp was still below 50 degrees, and that meant the water beneath the surface was even cooler. We had a bug or gnat hatch that was taking place from the height of the afternoon right through dusk. The midday was the peak of the hatch, however, the fishing seemed to improve as the day lingered on. The surface of the lake was calm for the most part, which meant we could readily detect surface activity caused by whitefish taking advantage of the hatch. You could also detect this by the activity of the birds as well. However, they seemed to spook the larger trout. Every now and then you could actually witness grayling or whitefish actually break the surface. That meant it was time to do a bit of casting, if you were close enough. And when you hooked up, it was like hooking the south end of a semi headed north. You better have had good equipment because there was no room for mistakes with 40 pound plus of angry laker on the other end of your short string, if you get my drift. This is no place for substandard equipment. After all, you spent a great deal of time, money and effort to take a laker trip of a lifetime. Why destroy the trip with inadequate or substandard equipment? Sure, you're going to let them go anyway, we all know that, but at least you want to get one picture for your wall of fame. And now get prepared to take a very close and personal look at the Lakers of Athabasca. Yeah, definitely high 20s. Nice looking fish. No question of that. Aren't they just gorgeous, the colors? Beautiful. Shame, shame, shame. You Put her back in and let her swim away. You bit that musky boss, didn't you? Here she goes. Okay. Yeah, let's see what kind of mess we got here, huh? <laughs> a big one. See what kind of a mess I have. A big one. Well, we have been switching back and forth, and the musky boss is outperforming this spoon. So, say goodbye, spoon. Say goodbye. Goodbye, Spoon. Goodbye, Spoon. I got fingers and hands that are so sore. I feel like I'm getting hoggish, Bob. Ah! I'm getting all the action. Don't even worry about it. This is bigger than the last one. There, I got him on the other side. That's better. What are you into there? I can't, I haven't seen it yet. I nice saw a fish. flash, now I see it. It's a big fish. Yeah, it is a pretty nice fish. Me nice fish. <laughs> she starts to give you an inch, you start putting it on her, Frank. That's what I'm trying to do. Look at the size of these horses out here. Plain incredible. This is a big fish, Frank, but I don't think you've seen the biggest yet. The way you're hooking fish today? Ha! Yeah, the luck has been really for me, hasn't it? Yes, you've been in good shape. Yeah, we just went over some fish. Got you down there or what? I never have seen him quite this speechless, folks. <laughs> yeah, it is a big fish. Oh, yeah, it's a real big fish. <laughs> Let me switch around here a little bit. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. We're trying to be out. 
<laughs> Struggling there a bit, Frank. <laughs> it's gonna pull you out of the boat. <laughs> when she's ready to come up, we'll know. <laughs> this one's over 30. Yeah, I think you're right, Bob. I'm sure you're right. Oh. No way, Jose, she says. Boy, that rain just wants to keep coming and coming, doesn't it? I think this is where we play Beethoven's Fifth or something like that, Frank. Yeah. I can see her down there. <laughs> Going the wrong way, Mr. Fish. Uh, she'll come this way. You get her head coming this way. She'll come. You got good control of her. Boys, that's a big fish. It's too bad you're not having any fun, Frank. Yeah, it's too bad. <laughs> Let me get him over to you a little bit. Bring the, if the head comes this way, I'll be all right. Yeah, I can just get it over there. Turn the rod around a little bit here. That was kind of a that was kind of a job to get that one in there. <laughs> yeah, that was a long one. Oh lordy. How many of these things you want to catch? I don't know, we can go home right now. <laughs> don't look at the side. That's enough. That's a big fish. That's a giant, giant fish. Yeah. Let's get her back. Bobby, I'm surprised you can hold that damn thing like that. I'm surprised I can too. Hello. 17 feet deep, big fish. <laughs> That was boiling out there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that that you might have a good fish. No such thing as a bad fish. We have we, we have not seen a small fish today. Oh yeah. Oh, big yeah. girl? It's a big fish. It's a big fish. You into a horse? It's pretty damn good. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how long that one is. Holy mackerel. Stan's not having no fun, folks. <laughs> Look at the tail on that thing. Yeah. Whew. You're into a big, big fish. He's into me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a big fish. I think we need a net. <laughs> Stay up there. That's it. Let's 
Let's go get him up now. Oh, this is a horse. <laughs> this is a good one. If I see the head coming, I was going to say, if I see the head coming my way, we'll get her. So quiet, Stan. Uh, this is a big one. <laughs> okay, you got her head high. Bring it this way. Keep her head high. Keep her head high. Keep it coming this way. She's going to turn around on you here in just a second. And if she does, I want to have this net here. Okay, bring her up. Bring her up. Bring her toward me. <laughs> that is a brute! <laughs> Man! Big fish. Okay, oh. just, just let her hang. Let her hang. And <laughs> you have got a hog. Okay, take your hand around the back side of the fish and support it. Bring your hand around the back side of the tail. Around the back side of the tail. You'll get her. Pretty fish. <laughs> Boy, that's a big fish. Okay, let's set her back in there, big guy. That is a giant. That is an Athabasca giant right there. Hang on to the tail. We'll see what it is. Coming this way. There's one. Oh, I almost had a double. Ain't a bad fish though, I tell ya. I haven't even gotten her up yet to get a look at her. Yeah? Well, I'm staying out of the water. Good one? Yeah, it's a fair fish. Yeah, it's 30 pounds. You're very, very close. Whoa! <laughs> you gotta have good legs to fight these things. Say something about you wanted to go crappie fishing? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I think so we're just fine right here. <laughs> you got the foregrip of that rod. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, yeah, Bob, I think I need a hand. I don't think I'll hand land this one. <laughs> Whoa. It's calm out here, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this fish has a different idea. Okay. Get right in there. There we go. Free spools on. Okay. She's heavy. <laughs> now the net's still around her on the side there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. This feels great. Oh, does she feel nice? Ooh. Okay, hold on. Ooh. Ooh. It's a beauty. Oh, she's getting heavy. Ooh. She's getting heavy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'll get one of you sitting her back in the water. <sighs> yeah. 
She's ready to go. <laughs> she's she's gone. gone. She's had enough of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. That was 11 foot top out here. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> well, folks, I think you'd have to agree. Rich Tuomi, Frank Schneider, and Stan Stanek and I, well, we've shown you some incredible examples of the Lakers of Athabasca. As we said earlier in the beginning of this production, we would devote this tape to not only telling you where to catch these fish or what we caught them on, but would also explain in detail the exact type of structure we were fishing. We mentioned a few facts that I would like to reiterate. Our season was July. And if you venture to Athabasca, you could expect Cliff Blackmore to assist you in choosing the time frame that's best for results. However, right. as I said earlier, this system offers a huge window of opportunity due to its physical attributes. We were blessed by one of the many bug hatches that take place in the middle of the lake, and this is part responsible for attracting the needed forage, the whitefish and the grayling. We chose an area that had great personality. In that, I mean it was a great reef with an incredible food shelf and very fast verticals. This allowed the trout to make very abrupt and predictable movements from the depths to the feeding areas as the bait fish were taking advantage of the ongoing hatch. Remember, as a laker matures, you, know, you, you can the, bank the on it that he or she will become a piscivore, yeah. and therefore will have no yeah, real interest it. in the hatch so itself, rather the not? forage it offers. <laughs> the reef itself was very large with the absolute yeah, top being good. about 10 feet deep and the oh, outer yeah. rim dropping rapidly to yeah, depths nearly 100 feet. However, the, the action field. was confined yeah. to 30 foot or less for our assault. We found that we had great success if we made yeah. large sweeping turns over the outer shelf's yeah. edge and back onto the shallower inside turns. Our bigger fish by far were coming as our lures were being pulled Never up onto the shallower far. portions yeah. of the reef say into about 12 to 16 feet. The trolling approach that we used allowed for great coverage as well as consistently changing our lure speed and direction. As the day lingered on, we took to casting spinnerbaits on the spine of the reef and caught an incredible fish. In fact, our cameraman caught and released lakers of 35 pounds and up. That's right, folks, our cameraman. Before we're done with this video, we're going to show you fish from this reef that quite frankly could eat five to seven pound trout for its dinner. Well, that thing really took out some line there. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's way out there. You want to know something? I haven't seen it yet. I just got a good look at it when I went by here. It's a nice fish. This water's like looking into an inkwell with this overcast. She's down there probably around, uh, I'd say, 8 to 10 feet. Pretty deep. Well, you want to go around the boat? Real good. We'll let you go around the boat. We're not fussy. <laughs> Which way around the boat? <laughs> Well, folks, if you, if, you, if you know Frank Schneider like I know Frank Schneider, he's never speechless. <laughs> big fish. This is a big fish, Bob. I see that. <laughs> this is a very nice big fish. <laughs> Come on this way. sounding on you, huh? If you want me to, I can swing the boat. Look at it, it's still green. Oh yes. Lakers don't come to the boat in two seconds, especially when they're 30 pounds. Yeah, this is up in that class. Yep, it is. <laughs> I still can't believe we're out here with a net this small. With a walleye net. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to take 30 pound class fish. Whoa, Ooh, look at that, that thing down there. Look at her. That is a hog. <laughs> 30 pounds. This is way over 30. Yeah, it's a good fish. Look at that down there. Is you that know, beautiful? I put 30 pound muskies back. This is bigger than they were. You, uh, you let me know what you want me to do here. I 
I got to get her a little bit more tired, Bob. Okay. I, I'm afraid if I try to horse her in, we That's may okay. just lose her. That's not a problem. I haven't seen yet how well she's hooked, so keep her tight. You probably got her beat. Bring her downwind. Coming around the other way. Don't let her. Don't let her get underneath the boat on you. Oh boy, Bob. <laughs> nice big fat pig. <laughs> we did it. You did a good job there. <laughs> when I fish with my friend Bob Messicomer, I get lucky. <laughs> you did a good job. Okay, let me see if I can. That's my biggest ever lake trout. Is it? Yeah. Hold on. Okay, let's slide her back. I'll get the net out of the way. <laughs> Please, let me take this opportunity to explain the equipment we chose for this adventure. It's very important to understand we had great concern for the fishery. Remember, I said we could be dealing with fish in excess of 80 years old. In fact, some of them could be over 100 years old, and we took great precautions as not to harm them. Our equipment included St. Croix Premier Graphites in 6 foot and 6 and a half foot version the PM60H and PM66MH. Folks, we're talking pike and musky rods here. Our reels included the new totally incredible Shimano Calcutta 400 or CT400 and the BM50. Our lures were well chosen with the Stanley Pike and Musky Boss spoons and the Pike and Musky Boss spinner baits as well as the Warden's T60 flatfish. All I might add was single barbless hooks tipped with Berkeley Select Power Grubs. As for line, we chose Berkeley's Ultramax and Gorilla Braid in a 40-pound test. The equipment we chose in and of itself spoke of big fish, and yours should as well. The right equipment is without question as important as releasing itself. If we were using the wrong equipment, meaning too light, and damaging the fishery, why even fool ourselves into believing we're practicing catch and release? Hey folks, come on up there, catch the big fish on the right equipment and have an incredible trip of a lifetime. There we go. Is it a good fish? Oh, I think so. <laughs> I can see that's got to be moved. Hi, right, folks. Welcome to today's show. I'm into a very big fish right here. We are at Athabasca, at Alyssa River Lodge. We're here for one reason and one reason only today. We are going to try to break the Saskatchewan all-time release record for lake trout. That's our game plan. I don't know if we can do it, but we're going to try it. Oh, goodness. What do you got there, Bob? Got a good fish. see it yet? I got to move this tackle box. You gonna want to net this one? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's very little doubt of that. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Oh, Ooh, yes. look at that fish down there. This lake's going to lay down for us, I think. This is a big fish, Rich. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Shows up good in this clear water. <laughs> when it gets by the surface like that, there's no doubt. Yeah. You let me know when you want to take it. You know, she's got other plans. I don't think she's ready yet. Holy moly, Rocky. This is a, <laughs> this is a musky rod. <laughs> oh.
you guys get sore, sore shoulders doing this. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can bring her up. Uh huh. She ain't liking this, I'll tell you that. Okay, she's gonna come. Just get the net in the water. I'm gonna bring her head around, okay? Okay. I'm on the free <laughs> pool with her. Oh, here we go again. She's going down for another run now. Oh, it's a big, big fish. When I bring her around now, I just let you. The head's gonna come in. Leave the whole net in the water and everything, because she's yeah. gonna swim right into the net if I bring her up right. Yeah, let me get her out now. Ooh, that's a big fish, Bob. Oh, that's a big fish. <laughs> yeah, we're going around in circles. <laughs> when you're ready, I'll just have the net in the water. I'll let you lead her right in. Okay, I'm bringing her back around now. Wow, that is a big lake trout. Ooh. Okay. Okay, she's coming up. Get the net. Oops. First in the net. Oh, leave her in the water. Leave her in the water. Oh, look at this. Oh, Woo. She threw that hook and look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a monster. That's the biggest leg trout I've ever seen. Okay. Like I said, we're here to break the Saskatchewan record on lake trout today. And I don't know that we can do it, but if we get no better than what we've got right here, we're going to have a good time. I realized I was a bit bold in saying that we were here to break the Saskatchewan record. However, after witnessing the event I spoke of earlier, I had absolute confidence that this system could produce a record Laker. The miracle was the fact that she was on my line. Not only did this fish break all the Saskatchewan release records, it is also recognized by the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame in Hayward, Wisconsin as the new world record release in 40 pound line class. And if not for our friends at Warden Lures Yakima Bay Company, this could not have been done, seeing that this record lake trout was caught on a warden's T60 flatfish tipped with Berkeley power grubs. If you are interested in approximate weight, and most are, there are two known formulas for estimating weight that would put her between 62.74 pounds and 57.4 pounds. Bruce Howard of Saskatchewan Environment and Resource Management Fisheries Branch recognizes the most conservative estimate at 57.415 pounds. The most important fact is she is well and still swimming. And in a minute, you'll hear the only measurements that mean anything, the actual length and girth, the information needed for documentation with the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. Folks, this is what we're talking about. The toughest fighting, hardest pulling freshwater fish of the true north, monster lake trout. The next time you hear the word laker, think about the giants of Athabasca. You won't be disappointed. Remember, these fish are no lightweights, nor should your equipment be. If you're going to campaign these fish in the far north, or any place for that matter, practice sound catch and release ethics by using the appropriate equipment, the equipment that's matched for these big fish. And now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record lake trout. Hey, folks, do me a favor. Practice CPR, catch, photo, and release. The future of fishing is truly in your hands.
you're short. Uh, 51. A little 51 lower. 51 inches. 15 and a half. Take the half off for the top. I did. A little lower on the girth. 30, lower, 31 lower. and a half inch girth. Okay. 31 and a half inch girth. Okay. Oh. Is that a monster? Look at the size of this lake trout. 15 and a half inches? 15 and a half inches. Oh. I want her to go away. side roll a little bit this way, Bob, and I'll get a Yeah, let me. Uh, look at the size of this fish. Come on, sweetheart. Get some life. There she goes. Hmm. We get another shot of that one. I'll get that from the side. Yeah, she's starting to revive. There you go. Okay, she's wanting to go. There she goes. There she goes. Woo, look at that. Didn't look that big in the water when I first saw it. She swam away. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna fire us up and uh, we'll keep going. What do you say? Let's do it. Hey folks, just one more time, if you'll allow me, I'd like to take a few minutes and thank some of the people who helped make this production possible. And at the same time, introduce you to a few of the 40 or so 30 pound plus Lakers we were unable to show you on this video. Remember, all of the fish were caught and released in a three day period with no more than 30 combined fishing hours on the water. And now, with special thanks, I'd like to introduce and thank Stan Stanick of Bloomington, Minnesota, who had what some would call the trip of a lifetime. Frank Schneider of St. Paul, Minnesota. Frank and I have fished together for over 25 years, and trust me, he was speechless. Rich Tuomi of St. Paul, Minnesota, general manager of Simply Fishing, and now a Laker diehard. And folks behind the camera making it happen in the studio and out, our shooter, Jeff Williams, shooter producer on this project. Al Linder, the Inn Fisherman, and Dick Sternberg of the Hunting Fishing Library for all of the knowledge I have gained from their works. Cliff and Stella Blackmere of Athabasca Camps for all of the effort they put forth on this project. The Saskatchewan Ministry and their efforts to maintain a quality sport fishery. And you for purchasing world-class Lakers and financially supporting us in our efforts to produce quality educational videos. From all of us at Simply Fishing, this is Bob Masacomer saying thanks and hope to see you on the water. <laughs>